Hey everybody, it's Trainers103 here today with not so much a replay cast, it is one of my own replays, this definitely was a game played on my live stream twitch.tv slash strangers123, you could have seen uh, what I was, well you could have, you could hear what I was thinking live about it there, though uh, obviously that's gonna go away in about a week as I'm not a Twitch partner, so you know, this doesn't get saved for that too long, and I really can't be asked to highlight it because it's not really too special, so I'm just highlighting it here. <clears throat> now, there is a reason for why, and you know, let's watch the chat a little bit, why I've got given this a very, very clickbaity title, ranked how to win without actually getting better. Now, of course, it doesn't apply or work so well if you aren't really, you know, a good, a good player. And you can see, I have Radar says our editor, so I immediately give the guy a compliment. <laughs> That's how desperate I was. But watch. Watch what happened. This guy has now decided to head in this direction, of course the pig Kagero, at least he has a survivability expert, and he's top hull. Edelar's Raiders, that's a good start. Um, and, well, everyone, well, a couple of people, it's uh, this and uh, this guy that are going to go ham on him shortly. Well, that's not really talk so much about what the Kagero's doing, or the thought process about it yet, I'll get to it shortly. But let's see what this is going to have of an effect on people's mentality, just watch the chat. No, Kagero, no, says the battleship. Fuck B, says the Edin lol. He's now maniacally pinging the map, telling him where he's gonna go. Everyone's telling him, get back. This guy's now all caps, there you are 100% useless, which tells me this guy is desperate, and, and you know, probably hasn't recognized me yet. He's a regular viewer of the stream on YouTube, I believe. So, uh, you can play. he's actually helped me do the Transylvania operations quite nicely, so... Uh, and shout out to him there, but we'll see what happens. You know, I'm not here to name and shame anyone or anything. This is more just to talk about my experience as a rank, highlighted by this one specific replay. Now, let's play ball. Here you go. Big spam, and he's like, you know, get back. He's negative. This guy's set in his ways to go there. And, well, this guy and this guy are probably losing faith now. In the game, that is. And there's a chance they're going to start immediately enter star saving mode. Probably. We'll see, we'll see what happens. Of course I know the result. And then, he goes, please report this fucker. That's the wrong mentality to have. This is really incorrect. No matter how desperate you are, and if you're getting to the point where it is really desperate, keep in mind, this was played a week ago. There's still like, at that point, there's still like three weeks left to rank. It's even well, two and a half, I think. And then you go, the end all goes, what's the point? I'll get to this, and why there is a point. And there's... If you think about this a little bit carefully, You'll actually understand why. I'm not going to explain it to you now, in full. I'll explain to you just this. The issue with tier 8 rank that I have, or my biggest gripe with it, isn't so much the tier, because the tier is actually quite well balanced. There are some outliers though, but it's actually overall quite well balanced. The problem is that in this, players, and this is the important part, Players don't understand how to play it on a top level basis, meaning that they end up going for the good old death blob and shoot the enemy, which means there's no actual individual player's skill involved anymore, or at least the skill is dumbed down, and it is really more about which battleship gets better RNG against cruisers, and which team gets a better fire chance, if you're just pitting two blobs of, of ships against each other, shooting at each other, because at the end of the day, it's really going to be down to who can get more kills. And you'll see this happening later on in the game. <clears throat> now, let's continue playing ball and see what happens with the remainder of the chat. Let's hope they let into AC. So now the Enelol has applied thought processes, and this guy has decided he wants to shoot at the North Carolina, which, of course, here immediately pisses this guy off. Not like he's already pissed off to begin with. And then, of course, this guy now gets, you know, noted by everyone here that he's a retard. But let's play ball with the chat, you'll see. And there you go, OMG, GG, he's given up on life. Warlock, uh, by the way, he's uh, actually an old clanmate from World of Tanks of mine. There's a reason I didn't mention this earlier. Um, he's now saying, 
Please don't fuck this up. It's, be it's better if you go spot middle for us and... Uh, okay, realizing he wants to go later, please don't fuck this up. Uh, someone, you know... The and now, someone else, um, a previous spectator, our turpit, is now saying, what the fuck, guys, grow up. He's clearly... Uh, let me... Oh, never mind, it doesn't work like this. Oh dear, I broke it. There we go. Oh, fuck it, I give up. But it is... The Turpets is clearly, well, well, previously a spectator, is now deciding he wants to pitch in. And then this guy starts spamming the chat a little bit more, further proving that he's an idiot. But he's gonna, but uh, I'll just spoil this for you right there. This guy is actually, who's, he's, he's actually the one that's going to give us a good chance to win this. I, of course, recognize this. And there you go. Friendly firing a team from the, the Eden lol. Everyone's paying attention. And he now calls it out in all chat. Definitely the incorrect move to do. You should definitely keep it within your own team because he's about to do, take a high risk move. And now, this is even the dumbest move he's making so fit. This is where I'm going to pause it because this guy has just made a mistake that could actually cost us the game. That is, of course, him. I'm not looking at this guy. This guy's actually doing a good thing, and I'll explain to you why. Look at this matchmaker. Ah, I can't get the matchmaking off. Oh god. What are you giving? Please, there we go. If I pause it now, there you go. Now, now it's actually on screen. You can see, we have a North Carolina and a Turpets. So they have the battleship. Well, the battleship advantage really kind of goes either way, because North Carolina and Anki kind of against each other, and these guys are the same. So, you know, they're, they're different ships, totally. We get an Edelol, they get a New Orleans, so we have the same 9km radar, this guy's got 100 meters better concealment, but this guy's got better guns. Although, if you get an Edelol broadside to a destroyer, and, well, if, if the destroyer is broadside to the Edelol, Edelol does much more upfront alpha damage, but the New Orleans can sustain damage at longer range better. And, of course, New Orleans is better at killing everything else. Like, he, this guy, with his AP, can do a lot of damage to our cruisers, especially the Edelol. Anyways, the enemy team actually reacts to it, it's, uh, it's actually their LOL Yang. Which, of course, could be giving him the impression that this guy's going around. Now, we know that the enemy destroyers, both of them, likely capped Bravo. Why? Look at the ships. Edinald, not in the cap. Me, I went here uh, I went here almost, like, pretty fast, not in the cap. Kudasov, he's slow, nowhere near the cap. They've already got it. Which pretty much tells the enemy team, if they're paying attention, <coughs> and if I was on the enemy team at this point, I'd be thinking, alright, Arkagano is pink and shoots me, and this isn't even the dumbest movie he's making so rip. This cap is about... You know, just over halfway, it's not even uh, three quarters of the way, yeah? Which immediately tells the entire enemy team, if they're paying attention, that there's only one destroyer here. Which likely means this guy, or someone, is either going through here or here. And they'll find out about this in about 20 seconds, when this guy's likely to start spotting stuff. Of course, it's not obvious, but we'll, we'll see. So let's play ball. This guy's already made a big mistake. In fact, he's curr currently of the team... Uh, this guy's actually made the biggest mistake of any any individual player on this team. Because he, <clears throat> with his chat, is giving the opponent team a massive hint on what's going on. Because this cap isn't ours yet, theirs has been there for like 10 seconds. So yeah. Now, we'll get about this. And then I'm like, there. Uh, and, and this guy's now said, no need to blow up our plan. So he's actually, he's basically confirming it. So he's also made the exact same mistake. And I'm, I'm, I'm now finally deciding to pitch in. Don't give them any ideas. And of course, from my end, this is important because I know this guy and I know this guy. This guy should also know me. This guy knows me. Which means that <clears throat> I'm now explaining to my team why this Kagura's move isn't that silly. And I'll explain it to you guys now here as well. These two guys are heading likely in this direction. The Lol Yang is almost certainly going to go into C, because he's Hydro, and of course we have a Lol Yang. He's likely going to have the New Orleans to support. Kutuzov, who knows, who could smoke up in the middle and try to farm as we cross. Who knows, doesn't really matter. But the important thing is their battleships. They don't have a North Carolina or an Alabama. These two ships have a high chance of wanting to cross over, especially if the team's destroyers and cruisers are already making the cross. Which means that nobody's actually going to be back defending their back camp. And this is incredibly important. Now, of course, we don't know if this cargo has RPF or not, but at least a survivability expert. <clears throat> so if he has RPF, he'll know that there's nothing here contesting him, and their shit's all here moving away, and nothing's coming back, otherwise he likely would have known about it already. Because their destroyers, to cap this, and then turn back, would have to make a bit of a move. And I mean, sure, they'd meet each other, you know, the uh, you know the cargo will get spotted here, the other destroyer will be getting spotted there in terms of the distance traveled, but... Uh, if anything, it's going to be the Benson, because the Lol Yang is likely heading in this direction, because he knows that he kind of... He should be getting in there to lock down the Charlie Cap. 
So I'm explaining. <clears throat> I'm explaining. If they're not expecting a silly move like the Kagura going down the one-two line, it can easily pay off. So I spoiled it already. This guy wins us the game. And there you go. He realizes his mistake. So he, he says sorry. And there you go. Just shut up and play. So there we go. We're going back to play. However, I basically... Of course, this is me. And I basically brought these two guys back from Oh My God, I Need to Save Star into, you know what, we actually have a fucking chance. And you can see that. So I basically, with me just saying, let's play, these two guys are now continuing to play. And this is incredibly important because it, it means that we don't actually have two people that are just going to be trying to save their star. We actually have two people that are going to try to win the game, hopefully. Eh. And then run into Peter Booster, who gives a crap. But here's the thing. What's that Kagero going to achieve inside of C? He could spot middle, he could torpedo past, but he still risks running into these guys. So honestly, this Kagero going there isn't the dumbest thing you've ever seen. Regardless, this serpent is now spotted. Uh, it, it could be from anywhere, of course. The serpent could think it's from the Lord Yang, but it isn't. It's actually the Kagero behind that's spotting both of these guys right now. So these guys are now taking fire from our battleships. Kudazov is also smoked up and is going to give these guys a good wanking. I don't want to open fire yet. And I should actually have, um, at this point, swapped to AB. Because I know that our Yang isn't going to spot anything. He's even torping in there, which is not a bad thing to do, by the way. So I'm using my uh, Akev Expert Loader. This is my Zao Tietan uh, Clan Battles Captain. I immediately open up the New Orleans. And, well, the game's going to continue as, uh, as planned. But the, well, planned and planned. It's going to continue as normal. But uh, the point I'm trying to make is that... Uh, your actions get remembered by people over the course of longer, uh, of multiple games. So if you make yourself seem like a bit of an idiot, or you do silly things, or here's the important one, and this is the one, like, you know, no one's really going to magically become super unicum over the course of one evening, or even the, you know, the week, you know, a little bit over a week that's left of rank, am I right? You know, it's, it's just not going to happen. However, you can definitely force yourself to maintain a better mentality. You can definitely do this over the course of one. In fact, you can even do this over the course of this one video. So if you are at this late stage of the ranked series and you are trying to rush through it, well, first of all, keep your own calm, because if you keep your own calm, you can help your own team keep calm. Now I'm going to shoot AP at this Benson. I'm kind of wait for, waiting for him to give me a better angle. I could have just double pressed one and had a seven second reload, but I figured he might give me a broadside. So, uh, you know, I, I'm kind of hoping for hoping for luck on this Benson right now. Gonna get spotted by him, but it's, it's not a big deal in all fairness. Pretty poorly aim shot. So with only two hits, I do the same with AP as I would have done with AG, realistically speaking. Though I could have had a chance to jam his rudder. He decided to torpedo at me, but I'm not that silly. Plus, he's torpedoing under influence of Hydro, so good luck with those, those right? Now, Akutazov has actually wanked down their turpets, the guy that was in the back of the base. Probably took some torpedoes from the cargo, which of course is, is uh, very good for us. That's one of the enemy team's battleships eliminated already. Now, I don't want to push into this cap, especially not when I see an Othalol already inside of it. And I know that the rest of his team is going to be right. What the fuck, the Kudazov is even pushing in. Wow, alright, fine. So I'm going to load up some AP shells and hope for uh, some uh, good luck here. That basically immediately tells me I am going to start advancing in the opposite direction, but more importantly, I'm going to start advancing towards the east. Now, a little bit less talk about the game overall, because I think you can figure out what's going on already. We're going to cap B, uh, we're going to continue contesting C. We, we, we keep a pay, pay a bit of attention to the chat. I, I will, I'll explain this shit uh, shortly. Anyways, opening up on the Otalol, not the world's best shot, you can see. Kind of shot a little bit too high, but uh, yeah. What, what I really want to whine about, realistically speaking, and you know, I, I am made a whinge about shit, it's, it's why I'm making this video. It's, it's really about the Amagi play. If you want to make a proper correct play on tier 8 in ranked, well let's just go back to play again. If you want to make correct play in tier 8 ranked, in terms of force multiplier, and give your team the chances to win, as I take a bit of a ridiculous looking lol pen citadel on my ass, but hey, I am after all in an Otago, so that was sooner or later going to happen. If you want to make the correct play, you need to gain fire multiplier, or force multiplier, or whatever you want to call it. It really is up to you what you want to call it. But Force Multiplier is the absolute most important thing to obtain in Tier 8. It is much more important if the, even compared to Tier 6 and 7, because, simply put, Force Multiplier gives you the ability to kill enemies before they kill you. And why is this important, you ask? Well, because in a lot of situations, it really is up to killing the enemy team. 
or at least being able to damage them sufficiently that the destroyers are left alone in the cap, for example, kill the radar cruisers, or put their radar cruisers in awkward position, apply pressure to the enemy team, make them believe that they have to do something, otherwise they start taking large amounts of damage, shit like this. However, and you saw this uh, very clearly with the Kagero, he was making... Whether he knew it himself or not, and in this case I, I highly doubt it considering the way he behaved, he just did something silly, but if this was of course a, a properly thought out move, then kudos to him, because he actually did a very good one. Now, that's not even me talking about this shit in hindsight, this is something I knew from the very beginning and I didn't want to comment on my team, because you know, getting in an argument with random people, especially people that are starting to get um, you know, desperate, and you could clearly see in the way this guy acted that he was desperate, and that's one thing you should avoid doing. Do not make yourself look like you're desperate in chat, because it, it basically tells people that you're probably going to perform horribly, because, you know, you're desperate. And that's very important, because the way you and your behavior presents yourself to the rest of your and the enemy team gets noted. Because if the enemy team sees a player name that they know has performed incredibly well, they, of course, they're either going to start, you know, focusing on you, or, you know, applying too much thought on you, and they're putting the mental processes on you instead of winning the game. Of course, this goes to your team's benefit, although only you'll probably know about this. You know, you'll, you'll feel it when they only shoot at you, by the way. You know, for, for example. But also, if you see on your team people that you know what they're doing, like, for example, this guy and this guy you saw in the chat, the moment I pitch into this, they probably never even noticed me, the moment they pitch into the chat, these guys are like, alright, you know, let's just play. Now, what did I contribute to this game in the end? Not really that much, in all fairness. The guy that won it for us was him, and of course the team killing the turbots at the beginning. And they tell us radars ready. But, matchmaking-wise, we should have been disadvantaged, have I not, right? They had a New Orleans, I'll take our off, so, you know, we had, we had an Edinburgh instead of the um, New Orleans. Of course, both are radar. They have an Armogi, which means that if they're pushing this direction, the North Carolina there is going to be a little bit out of the battle. And of course, we had a Kagero. Now, if you guys were paying in into chat earlier, uh, you would have noticed that uh, the destroyer that we lost inside of Charlie got a bit whiny about the chat as well. And, uh, you know, he started saying like, oh, oh my god, Noob Team no support, when he himself should have realized that he had no support because, well, our team was still here, farming up this guy. Again, Incredibly poor uh, awareness on both teams as I engage the New Orleans just as the Otolol get, uh, gets himself spotted, which is minorly annoying. I'm actually not sure if it was an Otolol or a Takao. It, it is a Takao. You can, you can see it on the camera, so I would I out camera the guy by a little bit. He hasn't actually noticed me yet, and neither has the New Orleans, but uh, sorry, they're not really the most important. I, sh I think I should have torpedoed there, by the way. But the point I'm trying to make is that by presenting you know, that these guys, presenting themselves in a way that, uh, you know, the, 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 our Lo Yang, that is, presenting himself into the uh, C-Cap without thinking about the situation he's ending up in, knowing, I mean, of course, he had no way to know that the Atagok and Kutusov and New Orleans were literally about to succubillets rush into the sea. And, you know, I, I did expect torpedoes from the Takao, which is why I put my Hydra up. But without them really having the, the prediction, if you want, the expectation that the... Uh, they're going to have three cruisers into the sea, our destroyer, well, he, he kind of extended himself into there without paying any mind whatsoever about the situation he's going to wind up in. Which, of course, is a bit of a mistake, but he realized eventually that, that we'd actually cap B, because he wasn't paying attention, he was paying attention to his own shit, other than what's going on on the map. Now we lose our end lol, and I'm 520 health, I need to kill this, I need to torpedo the New Orleans as a secondary set me on fire, but I'm, I'm still actually alive, so yeah. But hey, you see, the, the Eddie Lowell actually, he made a bit of a mistake, I guess, and he says, you know, he acknowledges it. And of course, this guy, the destroyer that originally uh, made the mistake of not paying attention, has now, well, paid attention after getting himself killed. He had the ability to pay attention. So he realized that, that he made a, uh, well, I guess you could say a bit of a necessary sacrifice, because his sacrifice tied up sufficient enemy forces that the rest of the team could just mop up and kill them all. So, what happened this game? Let me just pause it here before I kill this low, this uh, low wang. Just to summarize, Kagero wants to go to the one side. Of course, this could be a Kagero, could be an Amagi, could be any ship that wants to take a long way around 
and open up angles, be a distraction, and overall create force multiplier for the team. He definitely did. This guy actually won us the game. Of course, you know, overall, if we take in a fight inside of C, we could probably have won because they pushed their cruisers into this, but then they would have get, gotten C, so they'd have a point advantage, eventually forcing us to make a move. I was being pressured away by their Takao, which uh, eventually actually I killed, but he did the correct move to get himself up here, which prevents any of our destroyers from parking behind this island. This is incredibly important. It's, it's important to note because this destroyer here is no way out of here, otherwise he's going to get picked up by everyone behind here. So the Otago made the correct move, and he also zoned me away, because at that point I was lower HP to him. Of course, he didn't play exceptionally well, and I mean, I should have been able to whittle his health down a lot earlier, but I guess RNG wasn't really in my favour, and my aim definitely wasn't too good either. So, key things to note that won us the game. The enemy team committed to a flank that was actually completely pointless at that point, because we had gotten behind them, which pretty much meant that we already had control of the map, our North Carolina and Turpets staying in the back end here, and the Kutuzov killing off the enemy Turpets gave us a massive battleship advantage in the beginning, and you can see this guy's still on full HP, this guy's bled a bit but he's gone pretty ham, but you can see Kutuzov almost dead, Armagy almost dead, I picked up their, um, I picked up uh, their uh, Benson kill I think, and the uh, the Takao, or I don't even remember, I, I, I've, killed, I've killed some stuff, two stuff already. Who did I even kill? I mean, the Turpus is not me. It's... Oh, no, 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 no. It was in New Orleans and the, the, and the uh, Takao that I picked up at this point. But hey, I'm just going to go insert gun in the Loyang. Yeah, Kudazov finally goes down. I insert in, in Lolobank, and that's basically game in our favor. So what does this have to do with the psychology of rank? Well, first of all, I didn't actually do anything too special. I tied down some of their forces on Charlie, but uh, the, the uh, Kagano tied up their Turpers, killed their Turpers, in fact, and also got us the point advantage by having the Bravo Cap. Now, of course, I did talk a lot more about this replay in, in the sense than I perhaps even wanted, but or originally I had a plan. I mean, I don't script this kind of stuff. But the point is, we had it in at disadvantage from the start, and by taking a risk, a risk that only really one other member of the team publicly announced he understood the, uh, the risk to reward ratio of, we actually managed to win this, a game that originally, if the enemy team played on the equal skill level to us, a game we should not have been able to win. Right? So yeah, what's the point of trying to get across? Your behavior in ranked it is, you know, I'm talking about your chat, the way you behave outside of your gameplay. Well, even if, and if, of course, if you do, and this is something that is disadvantageous to me, as a player that does understand Force Multiplier, this is kind of why I'm whining about this, is that from a player's point of view that knows what he's doing, you get penalized with the mentality of your team, because your team simply don't understand. So your team is thinking to themselves, oh, that Amagi is going away from the death blob of retardation, uh, so we've lost, which is not true. It is actually that the flanking battleships, the flanking destroyers, especially in a situation where your destroyer is a Kagero, who cannot take a upfront engagement with any other destroyer and expect to come out of it on top, especially if he doesn't have smoke, and especially if it's a Law Yang, which can smoke in Hydro. So you need to take moves that do give you these chances, but making these moves involves taking risk that your own team is a lot of the times not actually familiar with. Which does mean that your team immediately gets demoralized, which means that otherwise a game-winning move is actually kind of working against you. So in the end, tier 8 ranked is just a complete fest of RNG and luck because it really comes down to who gets the better luck on killing destroyers and killing stuff early, and who gets the better luck with silly moves like this actually ending up paying off. So I hope you enjoyed this little bit of a rant. It, 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 it is a rant by all points and means. I guess I'm just trying to make it sound not so ranty in a way. And I hope you actually, you know, consider the, the behavior of players in rank and consider how you can take advantage or how to make this go better for you overall, in the sense of winning more games for, you know, and or just generally getting to rank one faster, or whatever rank you have as a goal to achieve.
Because in a ranked 2 to 5 bracket, especially in tier 8, it really comes down to getting lucky enough with your team not doing something silly, the enemy team doing something silly, and your team not punishing you for skillful play. Because they don't understand and don't cooperate together with it. Because of the good old death blobbing mentality. Which, realistically, just is a mentality that should go and die, but I guess it's human nature, because people do feel that there is a strength in numbers, when in World of Warships, that's actually the complete opposite. Blobbing up is not strength in numbers, force multiplier is strength, because it multiplies your power into much higher, quote-unquote, values than just being in front blobbing against each other, because if you're showing broadside, you over-average, you know, over the long course of time, you'll take more damage than if you show yourself angled. So yeah, hope you guys enjoyed this, hope you found it useful, if you did, give it a like for, and subscribe for more ranty content like this, right? <laughs> and I'll uh, catch you guys, hopefully for a replay analysis, some day tomorrow. Take care.